Welcome to my channel, That Middle-Aged Lady. In today's video, I will be sharing my experience with having cherry angiomas. If you also have them and are looking to get some information about them, well, you've come to the right place. So what exactly is a cherry angioma anyways? A cherry angioma is simply a collection of blood vessels that present itself as a red bump similar to a red mole or a pimple. Like this. They are a benign growth, meaning they are non-cancerous and do not pose any serious health risks. However, they can become bothersome and irritated at times if your clothing rubs up against them or you accidentally nick one while shaving. This can cause it to bleed, so don't be too concerned as it usually stops right away. They can vary in size from just a small red speck to a larger red bump that is filled with blood, similar to this. Sometimes they can even take on the appearance of a purplish or brownish color, like this. Because a mole can sometimes be cancerous and differentiating between a mole or a cherry angioma might be confusing, it is always best to have it checked out by your doctor anytime you are concerned. A cherry angioma can show up anywhere on the body but are most commonly found on the torso, being the chest, stomach, and back region. They are not gender specific, meaning both men and women can get them, with most people commonly beginning to see them after the age of 30. As you begin to age, the cherry angiomas tend to grow in both number and size. The cause is widely unknown, but doctors believe genetics play a role, meaning if your mother or father had them, chances are you will too. Other causes can also be related to chemical exposure, pregnancy due to changing hormones, and aging. One study suggests that 75% of people 75 and older have at least some cherry angiomas on their bodies, so they are very common. Most insurance companies will not pay for the removal because they are considered cosmetic, which basically means we'd like to have them removed because we don't like the looks of them, but it is not a medical necessity. Therefore, the cost of removal falls on us. In my case, I started to see my first little red bumps right around the age of 30, so right in line with the average age to first start seeing them. At first, I had no idea what they were, but just assumed, like with freckles, the sun must have been bringing them out. I was seeing them mostly on my chest, stomach, and back, but as time went on, I was also starting to get them on my arms and legs as well. As I aged, I started to see more and more little red bumps showing off all over my body. Each of my pregnancies definitely seemed to bring more out, but then again, I was also aging with each pregnancy as well, so I am sure both played a role. By the time I reached my middle 40s, my body was literally becoming riddled with them. They varied in size, with the smaller red specks being mostly on my arms and legs, and with the larger red bumps being on my chest, stomach, and back. I started to think back to when I was a little girl and seeing these little red bumps all over my mother's body as well. With her being a redhead and having sensitive skin, I just always thought they were little red freckles, but eventually learning what they were, I realized this must have been where I got them from. So, thanks mom. Unfortunately, I lost my mom several years ago. I miss her very much. I have always wanted to have at least some of my larger cherry angiomas removed, but thinking it would be way too expensive, I just continue to do my best to hide them and live with them regardless. However, after I turned 55, I started to notice that I was now getting them on my face as well. The few I had were still small enough to hide, but my fear was that they would continue to grow in both number and size so I decided it was time to finally bite the bullet and go and see my dermatologist about having them removed. I have watched other videos on YouTube with people showing how they use the hot end of a paper clip in order to pop the cherry angiomas themselves. But as much as I wanted to try this in order to save some money, I knew I wouldn't have the courage to do this procedure on myself and decided I would much rather have my dermatologist just handle it for me. Once I went in for a consultation, I learned that it wasn't quite as expensive as I had originally thought with them charging $150 for the removal of up to 15 angiomas. This seems to be par for the course, meaning this is about the average cost most dermatologist offices charge. Because I have so many cherry angiomas, I knew I would not be able to afford to get them all removed, but at least I could start with some of the larger, more unsightly ones. 
When I asked my dermatologist how they removed them, I was informed that their preferred method of removal is electrocauterization. This is when they use a tool that produces electricity in order to create heat and destroy the tissue while also cauterizing it in order to immediately stop any bleeding. Yikes, I didn't like the sound of that. Of course, my next question was, does it hurt? My dermatologist said it really comes down to a person's pain level and what they're able to withstand. She also reassured me that it's just a quick zap and then it is over. At least for that bump, anyways. She also explained that you can apply a numbing agent onto the angioma before removal to help aid in cutting down on the pain. Whether it actually works or not is the question. There are other methods dermatologists use as well, such as cryotherapy. This is when they use liquid nitrogen to freeze the angioma in order to destroy it. However, this doesn't always work and can sometimes leave a brown spot in its place. I can't say I'm looking forward to this procedure, but at this point, I'm ready to give it a try. I will be back once I've gone for the procedure and let you know how it went for those of you who might be interested in getting some of your cherry angiomas removed as well. If you have any questions that I can answer now or after the procedure, please feel free to leave them and I will be happy to answer whatever I can. I want to thank you so much for joining me today and I will look forward to seeing you again next time.